All right, we got our Model T all tore down that we just bought. And uh, the clutches are bad for direct or high. They're all pretty smoky. <laughs> this thing had a hell of a noise and high, so but these bushings are wasted. That's kind of common. This thing's 100 years old. I'm sure it's been apart before, but still. It's hard to believe that uh, 20 horsepower and 20 mile an hour could tear this old girl up, but... <laughs> yeah, we'll fix her up. Need old stuff, isn't it? Okay, working on our Model T here, and what I want to do, which I have not done before on one of these, is I want to attempt to balance this ugly looking flywheel magneto magnet assembly. This thing's really awkward, really heavy. You know, these engines shake a lot. You know, yes, I know you can buy crankshafts with counterweights and stuff like that, but this is Econo. We're just driving around putting bay, trying to have a few drinks and screw around. So, but the bottom line here is I want to spin this up and see if I can make some corrections. It looks like, and again, this is 100 years old. There's been a correction made there, so there's a drill, and there's a couple more here. So somewhere down the line, an attempt to balance this happened. You know, who knows? Maybe with primitive stuff 100 years ago, they did something. But we've got a new ring gear on here because these bolts that hold these magnet pieces on that holds the ring gear because the ring gear was junk. You know, this is where the transmission bolts up here and these three little studs, that's where our triple gear set goes. So I'm not going to balance any of that stuff. I know there's uh, talk and some of the Model T stuff where you can do that, but I want to spin this up and just see where we're at with this thing. So let's go ahead and do it. I have not spun this up yet. That's why I got zero numbers here. So not 400 RPM. Not too bad. 31 grams, that's not bad at all. Oh my God, I might even screw with that. So I'll see if I can get a little bit better though, but um, there you go. So it's really only 31 grams off. That's not a lot. Again, we're not Joe Gibbs racing. This isn't Rick Hendrick. This is definitely not freaking Robert Yates. So, I mean, we're not trying to go NASCAR quarter mile here, but that's really not that bad. <laughs> so. But I am going to make a correction just because I want to, and we'll see if we can get a little closer. Okay, I made my correction here. This is probably the only correction I'm going to do because it's not that far off. So I took a half inch drill bit, drilled about three quarters of the way down. According to the chart, about one inch down on cast iron or steel is about 30 grams. So we'll uh, let's spin this old girl up again. Fire up our Model T flywheel. So once 18 out somewhere else, I'm not gonna go any farther than that. 18 grams, that's nothing. Okay, getting the Model T transmission all together for our uh, 1924 um, open car. Well, it's a Turing, that's the word I'm looking for. But anyway, um, I got the bushings all fit. Uh, I've got the triple gears in line. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Just give a quick overview. There's direct clutch. We're gonna use the Jackrabbit clutch which is an upgrade for these 09 to 27 <laughs> cars. It's supposed to have a free or neutral. We've never used a Jackrabbit in the ones I've done before, so we thought we'd try it. Because uh, getting a neutral on these things can be a chore, you know, because with the transmission uh, directly connected to the engine like that 24 hours a day, you know, as soon as the engine's turning over, if the transmission settings aren't correct or you've got extra oil or clumpiness in there, the, the rear wheels are going to turn. So... We got our spring installed. We put a new uh, clutch spring in and uh, everything cleaned up. Like I say, years ago, you could buy reamers. Uh, K.R. Wilson, which was the um, 
Ford special tools manufacturer back then for old Model T and A and early V8 cars. They were like the rotunda that is today, or Kent Moore for GM, or Miller for Chrysler, for instance. So, Kara Wilson used to make all the tools. Well, they have reamers for all these bushings. So, you know, we don't own those reamers, and I probably wouldn't want to own them anymore. You know, there's probably some good sets out there. A lot of it's probably whoop. But, you know, with being an engine machine shop, you know, we have pin fitting hones and stuff in our sunnin. So I was able to precision fit all these stuff with the manners we have. So we're lucky. Most guys at home, you're not going to have all that. So maybe the reamers are the way to go. Um, so I've precision fit all these bushings uh, to these shafts. So um, I want to talk about the timing of these gears. You see, I've got this wired together here because this thing's got to be flipped upside down and go on to here. Okay. Well, there's a little C on each gear. See a little blind? They call that a C. All right. There's a C there, C pointed in, and then here's a C over here. All right, C, see that, ha ha. Okay, so basically it's about eight teeth away. So you should have eight, eight teeth between each gear. That keeps them in time because these shafts are spaced apart correctly. When this thing goes over and I pop that on there, I gotta make sure these gears are somewhat in time. Otherwise I'm gonna have one gear off, I'll never get it in. So that's what that's for. Like I say, we're gonna use a wire. I'm sure Henry Ford had a better idea but this is the best idea that I've seen uh, guys do is this wire. So um, we're gonna pop that in and uh, as soon as I get that in, I'll show you how to put the direct clutch in. Okay, I've got my triple gears installed. Everything seems to turn really nice before I put the uh, clutches in, of course. Um, but just a quick review, if you're not sure, uh, this is the brake drum because see these bolts, that's tied to this hub, which this hub is tied to the dry shaft. So when, when pressure is applied on this band, that's brake. Second one, this is low speed. So when I'm, when I'm holding this and the engine's turning, I'm running through the planetaries and I'm in low speed. This here is reverse. When I grab that, when the engine's turning, it's gonna spin this backwards. Um, this clutch right here, when this is applied, this is high gear. So that means all this assembly is turning as one. So it's a one-to-one -one or direct as it's referred to. So everything is turning at the crankshaft speed. So reverse and low are not turning at the crankshaft speed. They're turning at a different speed. That's hence the gears are for. So um, I've got my jackrabbit clutch installed. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, apply plate on. And then I'll bolt this guy on and then we'll adjust the spring. I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how I adjusted the um, spring. This spring here is keeping the tension against the direct clutch. So right now, in the finished state before it gets pulled on the engine, everything is going to be locked up. I mean, nothing turns. Okay, that's the way it should be because when those fingers are down all the way, this spring here is pushing against the direct clutch. The direct clutch is applied or high, as it's referred to in a Model T. So that means everybody is turning. Okay, so basically you got these three little screwdriver slot screws. I already got the cotter keys in it. I already did the adjustment. But you want two inches from here to here. So you're going to adjust these screws just with a tape measure, just like this. You know, and adjust these screws so you get two inches and then make sure each of them have a little bit of tension on them. You're trying to split the tension between the three. You don't want one of these fingers doing all the work. That's not cool. So that's, uh, that's exactly what I did. I adjusted this all up and uh, this thing's ready to go for the fourth main right here because there's another Babbitt bearing that slides on here that's an aftermarket upgrade. So, we're ready to go. Flywheel's balanced. Triple gears, tripper, triple gears are in. Reverse drum, low speed brake. Direct is in. It's all adjusted. We wired her together. It's hard to believe something 20 horsepower with 20 horsepower and goes 20 mile an hour would fly apart, but Henry knows something more than I do, so I put it back to <laughs> put it back together because everything on these old cars is all wired together like a freaking airplane today but hey you know these cars put america on the road so i, I wonder if he'd be i wonder what he'd think you know 98 100 years later that people would still be working on these things and driving them you know i don't think anybody had an idea how long these things would last but it was a good economical car and um like i say put america on wheels